is going on guys, this is Yix here at Magna Crypto. Hope you're all having a fine weekend and that you're all staying safe. Um, so this video, I want to cover just a few articles uh, that I've seen from the past few days slash week um, about Microsoft, about Ripple and about Galaxy Digital and Backed. So some, some very interesting uh, updates that have come along. Uh, that I think are very important going forward. Um, but before I go on to these articles and um, before I do just a little quick look at the charts, um, just in regards to my previous video I did about Zilliqa, so I did a little coin review. So I got a few comments from a, a couple of gentlemen uh, saying that I missed some very important things out uh, and uh, basically they weren't happy about it. Um, but for me, when it comes to like these kind of comments, I am always, always 100% open to new information. Uh, and that's what they did. They provided some information about some very important things I missed out f about the Zilliqa project. So as I said, I'm always open. I don't have an ego in terms of uh, if, I, if I've missed something out, then I will always put my hands up and, and admit to it. So, you know, I'd just like to thank those gentlemen that pointed out those things. It's very important, uh, obviously, to, to paint a full picture about each project. So they did a good job in doing that. And again, I am 100% open to people pointing these things out. You know, it's all about improving and getting better. So these kind of comments uh, definitely do that job. So I would like to thank those people, those gentlemen, for, for that. Uh, now that being said, um, at the end of the day, it is my opinion. Um, so obviously you've got to take you know, take that with a pinch of salt. Um, but let's get this video started. So just looking at the chart, um, total market cap of the crypto market. So we've hit some resistance here at around 272 to 275. And you can see this was a, a key level in the past. You can see a lot of wicks hit that area. Um, before and even in the last few weeks, you know, we rejected quite strongly off this area and now we've kind of closed the candle bodies around there um, and volume has been drying up, which, you know, I've, I've noted in the, in the last few videos. Volume has been drying up, so this could be an indication that we don't have enough fuel to go past this unless we get, uh, this could indicate that you know, if we don't get an injection of volume shortly, then we, we might be going lower to the next level's level of support, uh, potentially around 245 or maybe lower around 225. But we'll have to see. You know, if we don't get some volume soon, then that could be what, what's in store for us. So that's the total market cap. Um, Bitcoin, again, similar story. Uh, mainly in regards to volume, you can see volume is drying up a little bit uh, and so when we broke out of this bullish flag with low volume we tapped uh, the next lo level of resistance around 10,400, um, 10,200 and rejected strongly off that. So we broke out of that but now we've retested that top trend line, we've retested that resistance now turned support level but again because the volume is weak is it going to hold um, if it you know I'm leaning towards that it won't hold um, and that's mainly because of the volume you know you need you need um, good volume to to stay above that and carry on going uh, and without volume you just you know this it's basically a rocket without fuel so um, we'll have to see how it performs next week we may just get an injection of volume. I did see a tweet or an article saying that the Fed chairman, uh, Mr. Powell, is going to release some information shortly, um, potentially to inject some more liquidity into the market uh, to, you know, potentially to print some more money. So that could be a, a just kind of a jolt that we need to get some more fuel and keep going higher. So we'll have to see what he says shortly. Um, so same story with Ethereum, so it did break out of that long term trend line very nicely, 
um, as you can see here with good volume uh, but now again it's drying up a little bit and it's retested that long-term trend line uh, as I said same story we need some more volume to just keep going or we might just go lower or consolidate and again I feel like I'm just going on repeat now but um, we broke past the weekly support um, but we now retested the support level it has actually wicked below that below that weekly support so i guess out of the three xrp is really looking looking the weakest but we are now heading towards kind of crunch time um heading towards that long-term trend line so you know it's gonna have to decide whether it's going up or down really uh, very soon so let's see what xrp does um but we have some interesting updates xrp is not doing too good but ripple itself are doing pretty well so we'll talk about that in a sec uh, so that's that's the update about the market. Um, firstly, we have Microsoft launching identity platform on Bitcoin mainnet. So it's currently doing beta testing. Um, very very interesting. I think for those of us who've been in the crypto space, we've, we've been looking at our identification to be decentralized. You know, for us to have complete uh, uh, power over it. And you know, we, there's I, I've seen a few projects trying to trying to tackle it, but obviously Microsoft are the biggest, uh, you know, one of the biggest tech giants in the world, if not the biggest. Um, so for them to now actually have a, um, a, you know, to be in beta testing for a decentralized identity ecosystem is crazy, which is good. Um, but the more important part uh, for me is that. Is this part when they said um, so it's designed to be a decentralized network that will allow people to manage their own digital identities built on open source code pub is public permissionless a lady network that operates independently of centralized by even Microsoft for me that is the key that it's completely de decentralized uh, and is it's it's going to operate independently of centralized by even Microsoft because you know there's no point you know us decentralizing identification and then Microsoft having ownership over it like what's, what's the point of that that's just defeats the point uh, so that for me is the key part uh, very very exciting to see that um, yeah so they go into a little bit more detail about that since the keys for your for your DIDs, never leave your hands, and all ION operations are signed locally on your device. You have the assurance that only you can modify the state of your DIDs, no matter how you choose to interact with the ION network. So, you know, that's, for most of us, that's, that's music to our ears. You know, for us to have complete um, control over our identification, and hopefully, because Microsoft is a massive global company, if this kind of identification is recognizable everywhere you could literally like take that anywhere to hopefully one day you know go to another country or use that for idea I did use that for identification um, to apply for various applications and whatnot um, even if you get stopped you know um, yeah so hopefully you know hopefully we can this this will go successful and that we can use that for any kind of application because it'll just make our life a lot easier, a lot of convenience, and a lot of main the main thing, a lot of control will be back in our hands, you know. All the data of our identification, our digital footprint will be, you know, in, in our hands, which is absolute top, top priority. So fantastic news. And it just um, you know, Microsoft seemed to be doing quite a lot because even last week, you know, they're forming uh, uh, an alliance with Chainlink and IBM, um, which I mentioned in the previous roundup, a new non-profit organization, and they plan to streamline the complex crypto sphere and world of tokenized assets by building standards and frameworks. Uh, and the name of this company was Interwork Alliance. So Microsoft, you know, I mean, people know they've seen a couple of articles about them getting into blockchain but they really seem to be getting their hands stuck in so you know I think we shouldn't sleep on uh, Microsoft so that's Microsoft basically done 
Uh, next we have Ripple Chief predicts big run for Bitcoin. Um, so he did a, a, a video update for everyone just a few days ago. So if you just Google Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse uh, update, you'll probably find it. Uh, he talks very openly about the market, about how Ripple's doing and what he, what he kind of uh, expects going forward. And one thing he mentioned, which was very interesting, and you know, this is why I like Ripple and the CEO, is that you know, they're very pro crypto. They're not like just because they're pro Ripple doesn't mean they're anti crypto. Obviously, they want the whole market to go up because that will mean Ripple and XRP will go up with it. So that he, he always talks positively about the rest of the market. He's not, you know, part of this kind of tribalism, Ripple versus Bitcoin, and which is a very uh, refreshing to to see to hear but what he said in the video was he think i think the government stimulus now stands at about three trillion dollars in the united states uh, i expect it's going to continue to grow and i think that while probably necessary to prevent a more significant macroeconomic calamity it's definitely it definitely is going to have an impact on the future um so he recognizes that this needs to be done but Obviously, it's going to have an impact going forward. You know, it's not going to be free money. Basically, something's going to happen, uh, and it will, I believe, result in a debasement of fiat currency. And you are seeing that in some emerging markets already, where the exchange rates have started to shift. But even here in in the US, it's a factor. So the debasement of the of currency, if you, if you don't know that already, is basically when you print it to Kingdom Kong and it becomes useless. You know, it becomes so uh, inflated, it becomes worthless. Sorry. So it hasn't it, it will lose its value and then that will mean you know obviously you have to shift a new monetary system and that's what's happened in the in history for hundreds of years so you know he and he's saying that openly which is quite interesting because normally you know i wouldn't expect them to talk about the dollar you know him living in the us uh, and working with kind of uh, government officials to say that about the us dollar so you know for him to say that openly you know it takes a lot of guts, I think. Um, and yeah, he said it's important It's important to remember that Bitcoin was born in the wake of that global financial crisis. So he's speaking very positively about Bitcoin. Gold has been a safe haven asset in lots of ways. It did drop during the beginning of the 08 liquidity crisis, but then you saw it make a big run. And I think we're going to see a similar trajectory and a similar opportunity around the crypto market overall. So he's saying, you know, when this debasement might happen soon, it's going to be very positive for crypto, you know, where you have, especially for the cryptocurrencies which have a max supply like Bitcoin 21 million, XRP 100 billion. So those currencies which retain its value are going to do, do well versus fiat currencies which are going to get printed to Kingdom Kong. So, um, very good, you know, he's painting a, painting a very good picture. Uh, and although Garlinghouse has long said he's bullish on BTC as a store of value, he argues XRP speed and efficiency makes it a bit far better asset for payments, which, yeah, which is true, because Bitcoin is just very slow. Like, no one, no one can, you know, honestly say that Bitcoin is good for payments, right now, anyway. So, so yeah, he's painting a very good picture for, for the crypto market going forward. Uh, which is good to 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 hear from the CEO of Ripple. So the next article um, is in regards to banks and their cross-border payment methods. So this bank says it's ditching SWIFT using crypto stablecoin to power cross-border pay cross-border transfers. Um, so SWIFT is Ripple's big competitor. Well, it's SWIFT has the lion's share of all cross-border payments in the world. Um, and you know, it's it's a very old and you know ancient system in terms that it takes a long time for it to process. It's not digital at all. There's a lot of errors in it, um, and so a lot of banks have already been looking at you know a way to digitize this, uh, and hence why Ripple is so important because it, it's the next evolution in cross border payments. It's instant, twenty four seven, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but there are obviously other methods, and this bank is saying it's going to it's going to use the stablecoin USDC to power those cross border transactions. Uh, it's it's now switched to USDC, and we'll use that to move money cross borders. 
Uh, with the addition of USDC, we enable our customers to process USD payments quickly and token-based compared to the classic SWIFT procedure. The processing time is significantly reduced, but they don't mention how fast it actually is, whereas Ripple do mention how fast it is. Uh, so Coinbase and Circle launched USDC in late 2018. So the coin is designed to be pegged to the US dollar, which gives banks an opportunity to capitalize on both the transfer speed of digital assets and the reliability of USDC, or U, the, re the reliability of the USD. Um, which sounds all, all well and good. Uh, the only thing that you know goes to my mind is what Ripple's, what Brad Garlinghouse said about, you know, yes, you can have your own kind of stable coin, but you still have to communicate. You still have to send that to another uh, network or another, uh, unless you're all on the same network, that's all good and well. If everyone is within this network that uses stable coins uh, or that particular stable coins, then you can obviously transact very quickly using it. But if, you know, all these institutions that they're going to send the money to are on different networks, then it kind of defeats the point. You still need something to transact to send that cross borders and that's where XRP comes in because it can do that very efficiently. And something that, you know, Brad Garling Garlinghouse said about, I don't know if you remember, but JPM, um, I don't know if they actually released it, but they spoke about the, J the JPM coin and they're going to try and use that for cross border payments. And this is what Brad Garlinghouse said about that. So just pay attention to what he said, which is very, you know, it makes perfect sense. It's about, you know, what, about the JPM coin. Right. And I, this guy was from Morgan Stanley who was interviewing me. I said, so is Morgan Stanley going to use the JPM coin? And he's like, well, probably not, you know. And so, well, is Citi going to use the JPM coin? Is B of A going to use the JPM coin? Is PNC? And the answer is no. And so does that mean we're all going to have these different coins? And does that mean like we're back to where we are, where there's right. lack of interoperability? So like, well, I don't get it. One more quick thing on the JPM coin. So let's think about this. The JPM coin, they announced for institutional customers, if you give them a dollar in deposits, they'll give you a JPM coin that you then can move within the JPM ledger. Wait a minute, just use the dollar. Right. Well, I, don't, like, I really don't understand. Like, if you're just moving it within the JPM ledger, and it has to be dollar to dollar, you know, a one to one backing. It honestly doesn't actually, I don't understand what problem that solves. Now, back to my first answer look, if it solves the problem of JPM being associated as they're leaning in. So, I mean, obviously, he's talking about JPM coin and not necessarily a stable coin, but essentially, that's what it is. You know, the, a stable coin is, I guess, a token within the ecosystem. JPM coin is meant to be stable. So, you know, there's obviously clear similarities there. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really make sense to use a stablecoin unless you're all on the same network. So that's where XRP would be better suited for cross-border payments because it doesn't have to be on the same ledger. It can be, you know, sent anywhere and everywhere. So, you know, I just thought I'd make that, you know, clear distinction. I'm sad that, you know, I don't know. I don't have too much faith in it, but we'll see. And another Ripple update, they will be set to launch in Brazil. So they're opening, opening another corridor um, imminently. So as, as, um, so as, as said here, we extend these services now to more and more corridors, typically exotic corridors with lots of challenges and very soon within Brazil. So again, you know, Ripple are just, they just keep moving and moving and moving forward, opening. So it's, it, it's, it is, um, uh, Crypto Ari mentioned there beautifully why she said, um, that it's, it's a flywheel effect and like they're getting to a stage where it's just going to be exponential growth, you know, once you keep opening these corridors, uh, there's going to be a network effect where eventually it's going to keep doubling and doubling and doubling and exponentially grow bigger. That's why it's just, you know, uh, people shouldn't sleep on Ripple because it's, it's actively being used. So the use case is in use and keeps expanding constantly. Um, so like it's only inevitable for that kind of network effect to, to go into full effect short, soon. And last but not least, we have Ga Galaxy Digital and Bact uh, teaming up to make a power team. Um, so crypto investment firm digital, crypto investment firm Galaxy Digital and Bitcoin 
derivative company BACT are teaming up to launch a Bitcoin trading and custody service for institutional investors. A uh, platform will target asset managers looking to acquire and build positions in and store BTC. So GDT and Galaxy Digital Affiliates is providing market access and trading capabilities by the backed warehouse, a qualified custodian of Bitcoin regulated by the New York State Department of Financial Services is safeguarding digital assets for clients. Um, so basically, I mean, you know, you get the gist of it that they're forming a power team to firstly, you know, help purchase those digital assets for those big and high network investors, and secondly, store them uh, for them in a in a very safe manner. So these are obviously both specialists at what they do. They're the biggest in the game. So for that team up to occur, to happen is is absolutely phenomenal. So obviously big time investors are gonna look at this like this this is the holy grail. Like I can put my money into this and and earn high you know, make a high return. Um so you know, I was I was quite they're not competitors because one stores crypto and one kind of purchases them. Um, so you know the team the team makes a lot of sense but it's just like you know um, for those that watch football when you when you have the you know El Galacticos when you have all those big stars coming together in one you know as one team and then you're just like you know wow you know that's absolutely amazing and great for the space obviously this is going to allow more uh, liquidity to be injected is going to be a massive entry for those big time investors and I guess all that we're more, we're more waiting for is I guess regulatory clarity for all investors to be happy and uh, content that they're not going to get fined for, for, for investing in this volatile market so absolutely absolutely fantastic news um, great for the space uh, and you know great yeah just great for the whole market and that's where we're going to end the video so i hope you got some value from that uh, and i hope you're having a good weekend and see you next video peace